Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. This time out, a new pedal board system from Dave Friedman, and also tips on how to set up your own pedal board. Let's get started. Dave Friedman is well known as an amplifier designer, also for designing effects, but he got his start building rigs for touring pros, and today we're checking out a new pedal board system that he's released. The system we're looking at today is the Tour Pro 1525 Platinum Pack. Now this includes the pedal board, the power supply, as well as a buffer interface box, and we'll be talking more about those individual components as we go through this video. Let's begin with the pedal board itself. There are three different sizes available, a 15 by 20 15 by 25 which I have here, and a 15 by 30 Each of those has a two-tier design, so there's a lower tier in front, and then a raised tier in back, which makes it very easy to get to the switches on the back row during a performance. Each of the boards also comes with a platform for mounting a wah pedal or a volume pedal. I've got mine here on the right, but you can move that to different places along the board, and the largest board comes with two platforms, so you could have both a wah and a volume pedal. The pedals mount to the pedal board using hook and loop fasteners. It's very easy to stick that down onto the surface, add to the back of your pedals, and then just stick the two together, and this gives you a lot of versatility as far as where you're placing your pedals on the board. There are plenty of holes for routing cables underneath the board to a switcher in front as I have it here, or if you just have a lot of different pedals that you're wiring together. The power supply we're using today is the Power Grid 10 from Friedman, which is mounted underneath the board. Now this is a 10 output power supply, and each of those outputs supplies up to 350 milliamps, which is plenty to drive an Eventide, a Strymon, or another high current effect pedal. One of the coolest features of the Tour Pro system from Friedman is the Buffer Base 6, which is an interface box, as well as a buffer that you can mount into the pedal board and connect all of your different devices to that. It makes it very easy to set your system up. The way this works is, we have six TRS jacks in the buffer bay, and you route your cables from, in my case, my switcher box, or from your individual pedals, and you can route straight from there into your amplifier, effects loops, those sorts of things. Now I've got a custom snake that I've created that allows me to do a four cable wiring system. My guitar plugs in to the front of the buffer bay. There's a switchable buffer you can turn on and off if there's no buffer in your pedals. It comes through and then routes into my wah pedal. I'm using a four wire system, so I've also got two of the jacks on the buffer bay routed back to the effects loop in my amplifier. Another jack is routing back to the amplifier to drive the input. And finally, I'm using one of those TRS jacks as a channel switching connection for my switcher. If your amplifier has a quarter inch foot switch, you could also use that, route to one of these jacks, and it makes it very easy to have all of the connections on one side of the pedal board. Taken all together, the Tour Pro system is fantastic. I love the buffer bay, the power supply is awesome, no matter what pedals you're using, it can drive virtually anything. It's a lightweight system that's also very rugged, and I also really like the bag that it comes with for one reason in particular, and that's that it's sturdy enough that it actually stands upright when the board's inside. So as I mentioned, this is my personal board, and what I'd like to do is give you kind of a tour of how I went about designing this board and how I put it together. The band I play with plays a range of material, everything from Blue-Eyed Soul to Classic Rock. You can think of it as everything from Marvin Gaye to Steely Dan to Allman Brothers. So I've got to cover a fairly wide range of sounds, and I use a couple of different amplifier systems. In one case, I've got an amplifier that actually has a clean and a dirty channel, and I'm using my switcher to switch between those channels as well as that effects. But in other cases, I'm just using a clean amp, a Buxom Betty from Friedman actually, and so what I do is I run my dirt pedals in front of that, and that creates my crunch and my lead tones. Using the ES8 from Boss allows me to have different setups that I can instantly call up and switch among. So my first bank is set up for an amplifier where I have an effects loop. My second bank is set up for an amplifier where everything is in front of the amplifier, there's no effects loop, as with the Buxom Betty. So I can very easily switch between those two different setups by just choosing which bank I'm in. And then I've got eight presets within each bank that allows me to instantly call up different combinations of my pedals. I'm a big fan of switching systems for this reason, and the ES8 is awesome. Not only does it allow you to switch up to eight different effects in and out, it also has control options, it has MIDI switching options, I can change the channel on my amplifier, lots of different control features there as well. So that's an integral part of my system. Now let's take a quick tour of the pedals, why I chose what I did, and how I have things routed. For my guitar, which is actually sort of a mongrel that's made of a body and a neck that I traded an old pedal board for, it has a Seymour Duncan Custom Shop pickups in it, sort of a PAF with more beef in the back, and a little 59 sized version of a jazz pickup in the neck. I really like that combination. From the guitar, I go into the Buffer Bay 6 input. 
The buffer is actually turned off because there are buffers inside several of my boss pedals. From the buffer bay, I'm going straight into my wah pedal. It's not in a loop because you just want to be able to step on that and have it turn on and off. I don't want to have to turn a loop on and then step on the wah. So it's the first thing that my signal sees. We come out of the wah pedal into the switcher, and in my first loop I have a Shinjuku drive, which is an overdrive pedal from MXR. And I have that set up so that it's called up on preset number 6 along with a long delay. <laughs> And that's my sort of heavily driven lead tone. When I want to switch to more of a crunch tone, or I don't need quite as much overdrive, I'm using a Wampler Tumnus in position number 2. Now I've got that set up with a short delay on preset number 5. Loop number 3 has my compressor, which I tend to use for clean sounds. The one I have on the board right now is a Philosopher's Tone Micro from Pigtronics, but sometimes I swap in different models depending on my mood or what guitar I'm using. I have a Wampler Mini Ego Comp and also a Mini Hypergravity from TC Electronic. I like all three of those pedals, they all do the job very well for me, and what I like about them is they have a blend control that allows me to mix my dry signal along with the compressed signal. To me that feels more natural as a player. So I've got my first preset set up with just the compressor with a little bit of slapback delay. <laughs> I'm also using the compressor in combination with some other effects that are coming from my Eventide H9, which is in loop number 4. The presets in the H9 are being switched via MIDI, which is coming from the preset that's stored in the ES8. So when I step on preset number 2, it turns on the compressor, it selects the preset for chorus inside the H9 via MIDI, and also turns on my long delay. I tend to use that for ballads when I'm doing more of a nice chiming, rich, arpeggiated part. Preset number 3 switches to the H9 with a rotary speaker effect. I only use that once or twice a night, so it doesn't make sense to have a separate pedal for that effect. That's why I'm doing these things with a multi-effects pedal like the H9, because it allows me to call up those modulation effects that I don't use all that often, but I want to have access during my set. Preset number 4 switches me to a phase shifter and the compressor. Now this is what I use for more of my funk type rhythm parts. Next up, in loop number 5, I have an MXR carbon copy. Now this is set for a short slapback delay. In loop number 6, I have an echoplex from MXR along with a tap tempo, and this provides my long delays. I had to squeeze the little MXR tap pedal in here but it's still easily accessible for setting the tempo of my delay effects. One of the nice features of the ES8 is that it has a loop that's dedicated for volume pedal. Now I'm not using a volume pedal in my setup, but what I'm doing is I'm using that volume pedal to feed the effects loop in my amplifier. So the delays are actually living in the effects loop. The two overdrives, the compressor, and the Eventide H9 are all in front of the amplifier. So we come in, we go through the wah, into the switcher. The first four loops are in front of the amplifier, feeding right into the input. Then we come back into the switcher, using again a jack on the side panel. We go back out to the effects loop, and that's where my carbon copy and my echoplex are living. It comes back from the effects loop back into the volume loop here inside the switcher, and then it goes back out of the output of the ES8. Now on the output of the ES8, that's where I actually have my blue sky from Strymon, and that's providing my reverb effects. I don't feel it's necessary to have the blue sky in a loop inside the switcher, because I pretty much leave the reverb on all the time. If I do for some reason want to turn it off, I can just step on it to bypass the effect. The other thing I like about the blue sky is it allows me to save a second favorite preset. And in my case, I've got a shimmer effect stored there. <laughs> It's great for creating almost a pad effect on ballads. With these effects on the ES8, I can cover everything that I need for my band. And if I do need some extended effects, whether it might be harmonizing, some other special effects, special delay effects, all that is in the H9 and I can easily call that up. One more reason why I really like using the ES8 as the centerpiece of my system, and that's that not only can I quickly change among different presets that store different settings and combinations of effects, I can also bypass it and basically manually turn those loops on and off. So if I do find a situation where, for example, I want to do a clean sound, 
I can just step on the memory manual switch and now I can turn loops on and off however I like. So I have access to calling up different individual effects if we choose a song that's not in our set that I don't have a preset stored for. So that memory manual switching inside the S8 is very important to me. I love having the presets, but I also like having the option of being able to bring the effects in and out individually. One more thing, I can step on the mute button, which mutes my system, and now the signal is routed straight into my tuner, which is mounted here on the side, the TU3S, and I can quickly tune my guitar up silently. So how difficult is it to build a system like this? It's actually very easy. You begin by simply choosing the effects that you need to have on your board. Next up, sit down with your board and do what I call dry fitting. I sit down with nothing on the board and then start adding the effects and figuring out where they're going to fit. Now when you're using a switcher like this, you don't have to have them in a specific order because you can move the loops around anywhere that you like. So the physical placement of the effects doesn't reflect where they show up in the signal path and I like that as well, it gives me a lot of freedom for placing my effects. Once I had the effects set, then I applied the hook loop fastener to my pedal board. I also applied it to the back of the pedals and started sticking them down in place. The next step for me is to start running the audio signal cables. Here's a tip for you. To get measurements for all those different cable lengths, what I do is use a length of string. Simply route the string where you want it to go. When you've found the length, pull the string out, stretch it alongside your cable, cut the cable to length, and you're good to go. All of my cables are George L cables, which I like because it allows me to set custom lengths for everything. I don't have any unnecessary cable length dangling from the back of my pedal board. Once I had the audio signal cables routed, I routed the MIDI cable, which went from the ES8 up to my H9. Then I started running power cables from the Power Grid 10 mounted underneath the pedal board up to all the different effects. Now I actually have 11 devices here that I need to power because the buffer base 6 underneath the board also requires power. There are only 10 outputs on the Power Grid 10, so what I did is use the extra power output on the chromatic tuner and routed that to also power my Boss Wah. So I was able to power all 11 of those using just the 10 outputs from the Power Grid 10. Putting together a great pedal board that'll cover all your needs is a lot of fun, especially when you have a platform to build on like the Tour Pro from Friedman. The pedal board's easy to put together, simply select the pedals you want, lay them out where you want them, route your cables, and you're good to go. They're sturdily mounted right onto the board, it makes it very convenient to set up, and with the Buffer Bay 6, all the connections are right on the side, so it's very easy to plug things in and get going quickly. One power cable powers everything. One snake, in my case, runs back to the amplifier, or you could run individual cables if you prefer. So setup is quick and easy. When you're finished, store it in the bag, which is also sturdy, and again, stands upright, which I think is a huge feature, and head home, you're finished with the gig, and ready to go for the next gig. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Tour Pro 1525 Platinum from Friedman. Remember, we have three different sizes for the Tour Pro, 20 inch, 25 inch, and 30 inch, so you can choose the one that's going to provide you exactly the amount of real estate you need for all your pedals. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects, and we'll be making a lot of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.